Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are talking about the Cube Autopilot from Profi CNC what was previously known as the Pixhawk 2.1. Now in this video I'm going to talk you through how to install the latest version of Ardrapilot firmware onto your Cube and the reason I'm doing this is there are some things that have changed recently and there are some specific settings that you need to look at if you are using a Cube. Now this video will help you if you've never installed firmware on your Cube before or if you've got an old version on it both of those apply because the information I'm going to give you is relevant to both. So let's get on with this video. Okay, so the first thing I would say is if you've just bought yourself the Cube Autopilot and you haven't installed firmware yet, or you've got an existing one, if it's not already in your airframe, the simplest place to do this is do it now before you fit it. And the reason for that is it's a lot easier to test some things whilst it's sitting on the bench. Now, with the Cube Autopilot, it is strongly advised that you install the latest versions of Ardrapilot. The safest way to do that is to use Mission Planner. A Mission Planner is an application that is available to download for PC. It's free of charge and it allows you to map everything on the software as well as set all the parameters and upload the correct firmware to your flight controller. Now the best place to get these is from the official Ardrapilot download link. There is a link to that in the description of this video and from here you can download both Mission Planner as well as the drivers you will need for the Cube Autopilot as well. So do make sure when you install Mission Planner that you do install the drivers for the Cube Autopilot, otherwise it won't connect. Once you have downloaded the correct version of Mission Planner and you have the drivers installed, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is hook up your Cube Autopilot to your computer via USB. Now, depending on what carrier board you're using, there are multiple different USB ports. However, the one you need to use for this is the one that is located on the Cube itself. We are not going to be using the two on the side over here. It is the main USB that is located on the main Cube. Do just be aware on that one, it is quite delicate, so don't be too rough with it when you're plugging it in. But what you want to go and do is put your cable from your cube to your PC. So, as I said, to connect, we're going to plug in our micro USB port to the side of the cube, and we're going to plug it into a free USB port on the side of my computer. Now, when you plug it in, you will notice that the cube powers up and you get the flashing lights on the area around the bottom. Once it's fully booted up, you will find that it will be allocated a COM port on your PC. You will then need to find that COM port within Mission Planner and then click connect and we'll take you through doing that now. Okay, so we're going to take you through installing the firmware on the cube and changing the important settings. Now you're going to be using the latest firmware, which gives you access to the full sensor redundancy of this flight controller. So to do this, we need to go under initial setup and make sure you're online at this point when you do this. And then you will see all the versions of Ardra Pilot that are available depending on the usage case. So we've got Rover, Plane, Copter. So what I'm going to do for this scenario is choose Plane, plug my flight controller into the USB, click on Plane, and it says, do you want to upload Plane to the flight controller? And it says the version. So I'm going to say yes. It then asks me to unplug the USB again, click OK, plug it back in at this point, and it will then come up with this asking you if you are using a Cube Black. Now, no matter if you are using an original Cube, which is labeled Pixhawk 2.1, or you're using the latest one, which says the cube on the top, you need to say, yes, this is a cube black, because this installs the latest version of Ardra Pilot that is using the Chibios firmware. And when you do this, it means you're able to take advantage of the full sense of redundancy within the controller, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. If you click no, Unfortunately, it will install the older version and I'm not gonna go into that. It really is not worth looking at unless you know exactly what you're doing and you won't 
be watching this video anyway. So you need to click yes to this one. Once you do that, it will download the firmware from the internet and it will then upload it onto the flight controller. As your firmware is updating, you will notice that the LEDs on the flight controller will flash. So you will have the orange LEDs flashing as it is uploading. Don't worry about it, that is perfectly normal. Once it is finished, you will get the message to say, please wait for the musical tones to finish before clicking OK. Now, the thing to note with this is you will only get those musical tones if you have the speaker connected to the flight controller. If you don't have the external speaker connected, you will not hear them. Now, you will notice at the end of the update that the orange lights will go from flash into solid and then they will all go off. If you've got the musical tone speaker attached, wait for that to happen. If you haven't, what I would suggest is just give it a little bit of time before clicking OK. I usually give it a few minutes and that is plentiful and I'm able to use it. So now I'm going to click OK. And as it now has installed that firmware, we're actually going to connect to the flight controller itself so we can start looking at the settings. As I mentioned in the early part of the video, when you have it connected, it will connect on a COM port. So I'm going to click down here and you can see we've got COM 3 and 14. In my case, I know it is COM 14 because that is the port that it always connects on. So we're going to go on COM 14, click connect, and it will then try to connect to the flight controller and when that is successful it will start saying things like getting prams and downloading the main settings of the FC. Once you have connected to the flight controller, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go through all of the main settings. Now, I'm not going to do that in this video. If you've never set one of these up before, I would strongly suggest clicking on the wizard and following that process through. It will take you through calibrating the flight controller, making sure your RC is connected, but you only want to do this once you've got all of the accessories plugged in. You don't want to do this when you're not in that position. Um, what I am going to take you through though is changing a couple of very specific settings. And the reason for that is as follows. In May 2019, which is now, the guys over at Profi CNC and Ardra Pilot have made some changes, which means you can now take full advantage of all of the IMUs in the flight controller. We call these EKFs and with the latest Chibios base firmware, it's now able to run all of them in the background. However, this isn't actually set up as standard. So you need to go in and change the prams and I'm going to take you through doing that now. So to enable all three EKFs, we're going to go into config and tuning and we're going to go into the full parameter list and this is where all of the settings for the flight controller are held we're going to specifically look for something called ek2 underscore imu underscore mask now you can search for that down in here or the quickest way to do it is do it via the search on the side so i'm going to go ek2 underscore imu underscore mask as you can see it's come up at the top now when this is set as default you will see that the value is set to three and at this moment it is actually only using two of the imus of the three so there are three within the cube it's only using two of them we want this to use all three to enable this you need to change that value there from a three to a seven now, there's two ways of doing it. When you click on it, it will either come up and show you the box and you can then click third IMU or you can manually change it to a seven. So if you click the third IMU option and click the X, you will see that the value is already changed to seven or I can actually manually change it myself. So if I put it as six, for instance, no, we want it as seven, hit enter and change it. And that option V will enable all three IMUs on the flight controller. When you've changed that one, you want to click right prams. It will ask you if you're sure, do that. It will say successfully changed. We then need to change one more other setting and that one is called INS underscore use. So we're going to search for INS underscore use. 
and you will see that three options for this comes up. INS underscore use, INS underscore use two, and INS underscore use three. For these, all three need to be set to number one. Now you can see on mine that we've got one, one, zero. So I just need to change the INS underscore use three to one. So all of the options should be showing a number one. And again, we're going to write the prams file to the flight controller. Once we have done that, there is one more thing I would take a look at, and this isn't a setting that you do need to change. However, it is one worth checking, and this is the setting that makes sure the flight controller knows it is a cube black. And to do that, it is called BRD underscore type. Uh, BRD underscore T-Y-P-E. And you can see it's come up and the setting for that should be number three because you selected the black cube at the start this should already be okay however i would double check it just in case and that is the main things that you need to change once you have uploaded the cube black firmware onto your cube or pixhawk 2.1 as it is known from this point here you now need to either go through your basic settings or your parameter settings or follow through the wizard as I said, the idea of this video was to take you through the firmware. At this stage, your cube now has the very latest firmware installed and it has the very best main settings for the flight controller and its redundancy. And that is it for this video. If you like what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. It's only by you guys subscribing are we able to keep making videos like this. If you are looking to get your Cube Autopilot, there is a link to it via a company called 3DXR in the UK. They are a fantastic dealer and they do support the channel as well. So please do check them out if you are looking to purchase one. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to click that button and I will do another video again soon.